you can't tell at the moment, but I am sitting on a much more comfortable seat today because the cushions are done! Hi, I'm Ellie and welcome to my 2007 Toyota Hiace Arcadia, which I'm in the process of converting for van life. And we are nearing the end, it is in sight, and that's why I've gone ahead and made my cushions. This has involved cutting up a mattress and then making some custom covers for it, so let me show you exactly what I did. I'm Ellie Wilder and you're watching Wilder in Motion. In a previous video, I created my bed frame, which converts from two bench seats, one of those I'm sitting on now, into a full queen-size bed. The way that my system works, like a lot of these, is to have three cushions. And there's a few options that these cushions can be made out of. The main ones are upholstery foam or a latex or foam mattress. After watching a few other people's videos, I came to the conclusion that a foam mattress was the best option for me. Upholstery foam isn't designed to be slept on and it can be a little bit variable in terms of density. It's really hard to know what to get. At least with a mattress, you actually know that it is designed to be slept on and you can go and try it out in store most of the time. I ended up going with an IKEA foam mattress from the Moshalt collection and I bought a queen size to fit my space. IKEA has lots of foam mattresses so it's really easy to go and try out and this happened to be the most comfortable for me. The great thing about a foam mattress is it's pretty easy to cut. If you are a little nervous about it you can pay to have it cut at Clark Rubber but I decided to give a few of the DIY methods a go and I found that using a bread knife was the most effective. It didn't get the cleanest of cuts but considering that my cushions will have covers on them at all times this didn't bother me too much. I cut the mattress into three sections, the main one being the 60 centimeter part of my couch, then the back of my couch is 50 centimeters, and then the littler piece that I'm sitting on right now is about 34 centimeters. So this was effectively the entire mattress. There was just a very slim piece that I cut off at the end, but pretty much my bed is a queen mattress size. For the cushion covers, I used an outdoor upholstery fabric. It's nice and thick and durable and it's also water resistant, so it's ideal for something that's going to be getting a fair amount of wear as I'm sitting on it, sleeping on it, and moving them around into the various configurations. Of course, I picked a print that matched my theme. I went with a predominantly green fabric that features some Australian flora. I didn't quite end up buying enough fabric, but I decided that this was a blessing in disguise and that I would make them flippable by buying another print to do on the other side. I went with a mostly white but with green ferns on it fabric to also complement my colour scheme. This is great because it means I can change up the look of my van whenever I want, and it will also encourage me to flip the mattress to stop damp from building up and causing mould. So I took my measurements, added a 1cm seam allowance, and cut out my fabric to size. Each print has one top panel and one side panel, and the end panels are the floral print, which is my main fabric. Because I had more of the floral print, I was actually able to do the top and the side panel all as one big piece, and this saved me having to do an extra seam, which reduces the chance of it fraying as well. With my palm leaf fabric, on the other hand, I had to cut these two panels separately, but it's not really a big deal, it just means an additional seam. I decided to repurpose the mattress protector that was around the foam mattress by unpicking the zip and then using these panels to add another layer of protection for the mattress. It means that if anything gets spilled on it in the van, it's much less likely to penetrate into the foam and cause long-term problems such as mould. So leaving the end panels until last, I took the front panel and the side panels, put them right sides together, pinned, and then sewed a seam one centimeter from the edge. I also used a zigzag stitch to reduce the fraying because the mattress protector and these two fabrics are quite prone to fraying. Basically, I was creating an inside-out tube that would act as the main body for the cushion covers. One panel is my floral fabric that acts as both the top and the side, and then two panels that are the palm leaf fabric that acts as the bottom and the other side. Now that's the easy part because they're all straight stitches. Adding the end part is a little more difficult because we're turning this into a three-dimensional shape. To make sure everything lined up, I had to pay a little more attention to pinning things in place beforehand. And for the most part, I sewed the rectangle as four individual lines, because it is a little tricky to sew around the corners. And I zigzagged these in place too, to reduce fraying. Now originally I wanted the zip of the cover to be going long ways, because this would make it a lot easier to take on and off. 
However, it's pretty hard to come by two meter long zips, so instead I had to put them on the short side. But to keep access nice and easy, I actually made it wrap around the end so it was in an L shape going around the corner so that I had a larger gap that I could use to take the cushion in and out. So I pinned in place the other end piece and for the two sides that weren't having the zipper sewn in, the process was much the same as the other end. However, once this was done, I used a technique called basting to help me put the zipper in. Basting is roughly hand sewing to hold fabric in place. It's kind of like a more effective version of pinning. In this case, I actually basted the fabric together, even though in the end I wanted it to be able to open. By basting the fabric together, I'll make sure that it remains lined up as I put the zipper in. One of the risks of putting a zipper in without basting is that the fabric gets pulled in one direction or another or that the zipper doesn't line up. But basting means that the fabric is held in the position that you want it to eventually end up in as you're putting the zipper in. I basted a couple of centimeters down from the edge. This meant that there was enough room for the zipper to actually fit. I was able to open up the seam and pin one side of my zip in place. Then using a zipper foot on my sewing machine, I sewed close to the inside of the zip. Once I was happy with this, I pinned the other side of the zip to the other side of my hand sewn seam and sewed in using my zipper foot the same as the other side. And both of these seams were also zigzag stitched. Then I unpicked my basting and I was left with a fully functioning zipper opening with no kinks, puckers or pulls in it. I repeated the same process for all three of the cushions. And once that were complete, it just took some gentle persuasion to roll them onto their corresponding cushions. In total, I've used about six meters of fabric on these cushion covers. The cost can really vary depending on the quality of fabric, but generally outdoor upholstery fabric is a little more expensive, but totally worth it for the durability for me. And it was definitely a good thing that I didn't have enough of that other fabric because I love now that I have the option to flip them if I want to. I won't be sleeping directly on top of the fabric. I will have a sheet slash mattress protector, something that I'll sort out later that will lie over the top. That means that that will be really easy to wash. I think this has been the part of the van build that I've been most excited for because now it really is a camper van because I can actually sleep in here. I don't have my electricity or water yet, but if I wanted to, I could give it a test run for a night. I've got a comfortable place to sleep on, plus the whole aesthetic of the van really comes together and it just looks so much more finished having this really beautiful fabric in here. And I'm starting to accessorize. <laughs> Well, I hope you gained some kind of knowledge or entertainment from seeing me make my cushion covers. The van is coming together more every single day. I've got plenty more van conversion vids coming up over the coming weeks. I post every Saturday morning. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want more, be sure to like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.